you know when that son of man stood before the judge, he knew he did. And the judge said, no guilty. And that was all finished. Listen to me. When you taste of the goodness of God, it blows your mind. It blows. Wow. Me. 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 Like such. What are you talking about? Me. Holy. Oh no. Me. Upright. Oh no. You see that? That that is exactly what you are. You are like such. You are holy. You are pure in the eyes of God. You may not feel like you are pure. It don't matter. The truth is God has made you pure. Let me read the words. Okay? Let me read the words. I am a man. Mando. Yeah. 
to offer sacrifice upon sacrifice. But this man, by one sending out to sacrifice the thousand prophets of the blood of Jesus, by one sacrifice. Prepare a body for me to come and live in 
again. That's such a risk again. You be your own spirit. Live in your own. So Jesus had to come. And from the Father, the pre-existent Christ was taken and made fashion and born before him. And he lived in. Right? So a body you have prepared for in burnt offerings and in sacrifices for sin. Now it has no, it has no pleasure. Then I said, Lo, I come in the form of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O oh God. Alright? Then you say she, verse, but, uh, verse 10, by the which will, by this will that he came to do, to offer his body, to spill his blood, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So the power in the blood is to set us apart. Once you come and the strength of your soul and your soul is washed and you are cleansed, God sets you apart from sin. When you go and sin, willingly, you are being refined. When you know what you are doing is wrong, you should not be doing, you keep on doing, you are walking at God. You know? You are saying the blood has no power to keep me sanctified. Don't pray with sin. You said that he who shall says, Chapter 10, it belongs about this deliberate will for sin. For if we sin willfully, there is no more sacrifice for sin. Then what is left is you are waiting for a judgment of God. So we don't pray with will for sin. Now, God has made room. First John chapter 2, little children. I am writing this to you so that you will sin. But if you should sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Go to him when you sin and ask for forgiveness and let him wash for his blood. When you sin, when you sleep and you sin, don't lie in the sin. Get up, go to God, repent, ask Him to forgive you. And He will wash you back. Okay? Alright, but look at chapter 9, verse 12. That's the joy from the Father. The problem, the whole problem was the conscience. 
from. They were always aware of their sin. Even though the high priest went and spilled blood to the Holy of Holies, they still had conscience problems. In the New Testament, we don't have conscience problems. We don't have guilt problem. There was guilt due to the conscience. The conscience is tormented. But the conscience knows that it has fallen short. In the new covenant, the blood of Jesus gets in there and cleanses our conscience of every unclean filthy that we ever did. The accumulation of wickedness. God purges it. God cleanses it by the blood of Jesus. So that our conscience does not bother us anymore. As long as you are walking in obedience, you should have no conscience problem. I hear me. When you have conscience problems, your faith will suffer. You are a son of God with the right to come straight in the presence of the land God. Any guilt conscience will torment your God. Any unconfession will be a problem for you. You cannot go in because your conscience will be bothered. You go in to the new right. Therefore, Whenever you know you have done something you should not have done, repent. Don't let it build up. Repent sincerely and ask God to forgive you. If we sin, shall I say we will be separated. But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all righteousness. Sin unconfessed is sin uncleansed. The blood can only deal with confessions. The blood of Jesus, it will deal with sins confessed, it will wipe you clean from your sins. Because listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> the most important thing that has happened to you as a son of God is the ability to come right into the presence of God. Amen. This is your life. This is your home. This is what protects you. Coming to God to talk to Him with clean conscience. Knowing you have the right, knowing you've been walking with him. If you are coming something more that you confess it to him and let him forgive you, God will forgive you. Amen. Hear me? Yes. God will forgive you, my sister, my brother. Ask him to forgive you. And when you confess your sin, don't go back and do it again. You are playing with fire. This is what you need. Remember last night I told you the high priest and the old covenant they could not go to the place of God. If they went there they would die. If the high priest went to that blood he died. And if you went before God Foolishly, he died. The only way they want to say here, they have to stay away from God or they keep safe. In the new covenant, you gotta come on in to live. You gotta come before the presence so that you can live. Your life is in the Holy of Holies. Your life is in the very presence of God. This is what Jesus has done for us. Am I telling somebody something? Listen, God, your access to God. God, let me, let me, let me throw something here. Look 
That is why we need from the Amplified. That is why Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. Christ and the Lord. But the words, it was credited to him. It was a given sense. It was a Peter. For instance, you are coming. Right? Righteousness was given to the ground by God because he believed. Right? So he said, she. But this word, it was credited to him, were written not for his sake alone, but they were written for our sins also. Righteousness standing acceptable to God will be granted and credited to us also who believe in, trust in, adhere to, and rely on God who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. Amen. That is how we get answered. By believing God who raised Christ from the dead. That is it. Yeah. Jesus who was delivered for our offenses. Jesus was delivered to be crucified for our sins. And was raised again for our justification or our righteousness. They killed him because of our offenses. He was raised up from the dead so that God can declare us righteous when we believe. Right? Now see chapter 5. Therefore, therefore, because Jesus was delivered for our sins and was raised up for our justification, therefore, being justified by faith, since we have been put into right relationship with God by faith. That's what the word justifies means. To be put in the right relationship with God by God. Since we've been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are one. Peace with God. So when God says you are justified, you are righteous, he puts you right here. Right line. Heaven's peace goes into your heart. Amen. By this peace. Why do I say I will peace my soul? I'll be married. I'll be in Jesus. And I'll be in peace. Access. I 
access is a door. Access is a door. I'm talking to you in the spirit. Access is a door. Who opened you in the spirit so that your soul, your being can latch on to God?
to open your heart in love to that God. To Jesus. And tell him to love him. Keep on telling him to love him. And see what he will do. That guy is a love. Jesus is a love. He responds to my heart of faith and love. He will start drawing near to you because you are drawing near to him. He will start opening his heart. Amen. I know you are no grass what I'm saying, but my soul is burning with love. That's great. Something is happening to my inside. It's so sweet to go into the presence of God. And open your heart to him and talk to him. We learn to talk love here. And then we do, we take what we have learned in our intimate fellowship with God and bring it out to This is where the groom, marriage groom, is gone from here. Oh. 